Hello, good morning, welcome back. Today is Monday in the Holy Week and this week we are diving into the scriptures to read about the last events in Jesus' life before His resurrection on Easter. If you've not done so yet, then click on the link below to download a reading plan that will help you read through the events this Holy Week. There are a lot of readings and each day I will just pick one short passage and meditate about it with you and take some time to pray. Today we are reading Mark chapter 11, verse 12 to 19. Feel free to read along in your own Bible at home. Mark chapter 11, 12 to 19. The next day as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple court and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. As he taught them, he said, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it a den of robbers. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him, for they feared him, because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. When evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. The reading starts with Jesus and his disciples leaving Bethany. And yesterday, after a long day, after going into Jerusalem, they went back home to Bethany. Now, Bethany is a small town, a small village, about three kilometers uh, east of Jerusalem. And in Bethany, Lazarus was raised from the dead. It was the town where Lazarus lived with his sisters, Martha and Mary. And they were close friends with Jesus. And it is very well possible that Jesus and his disciples during this last week, for several nights, stayed in Bethany with Lazarus, Martha and Mary. Now... They leave Bethany, go to Jerusalem, and on the way Jesus sees a fig tree in leaf. Remember, we are in the Jewish month of Nisan. As uh, our friend Omer pointed out yesterday, thank you Omer for those comments. And you and other people, feel free to keep on commenting and adding to what I'm saying here. Uh, Jewish month of Nisan uh, is springtime. So Jesus finds a fig tree in leaf. But obviously there is no fruit on it. It's not the right time yet. It's not the season yet. And so when Jesus curses this fig tree, it is not so much that he is disappointed because there is no fruit to feed his hunger. It is much more about teaching a lesson to his disciples. And if you keep on reading today and tomorrow, you will learn more about the meaning and the significance of this event. After a walk, they enter Jerusalem and they enter into the temple and Jesus looks around and is upset. This is the temple, the place where God dwells among his people, the place where people would come and pray and worship and bring sacrifices. Often people would come there and buy a lamb or a goat or doves that they would slaughter and sacrifice her at the temple to atone for their sins. This was a religious uh, ceremony which God himself had told the people to do. But it appears that the religious leaders in those days and other people who were connected to the temple made this into a big business. I mean, they just brought animals and cattle into the temple courts and they would sell it right there at the spot. And so it became a place of, of business, a place of money, a place to gain wealth. And 
Jesus gets angry and he goes around. He frees the animals, he frees the doves, he turns around the tables of those who are changing money into different values. And he says, is it not written that this house should be called a house of prayer for all nations? When the temple was first being used, after King Solomon had built it, and the Lord took his dwelling place in the temple, Solomon prays a prayer. And part of that prayer is that Solomon prays and says to the Lord that he prays that this house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. So, what Jesus is doing here, he is clearing the temple. The temple that has been corrupted and misused for wrong purposes. And he says, out with these things, out with this business, out with this money. And he brings it back to its original purpose. A house of prayer for all nations. A house of worship to the Lord. Now today we do not have temples anymore. But the Bible in 1 Corinthians says that our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And we are called to keep it pure and holy. Because we worship the Lord with our bodies with our lives, with our whole being. And so my question for you today is, has your life been corrupted? Do you have bad habits or sins or even addictions that would need to be cleared out, that would need to be wiped out? Does Jesus need to come into your life and wipe it clean? And bring it back to its original purpose. To pray and to worship and to live for the glory of God. That works for you and that is necessary for me too. I'm not a perfect man either. We all need God's grace, God's forgiveness. And we are assured that if we confess our sins to the Lord, that He will forgive them. And that we can make a fresh start. And we do that every day. We live out of grace, we do our best, we fail all the time, but God is good and His mercy endures forever. Let us pray and ask the Lord to wipe us clean, to clear us out and to bring us back to the purpose of living for God. And remember that this Holy Week is part of the season of Lent, the 40 days leading up to Easter. And this period is specifically a period to reflect and to repent and to confess our sins to the Lord. To, so to speak, make a new start, make a new beginning. Let us pray that Jesus will come into our lives and make us clean. Father God, we thank you that you've sent your Son, Jesus Christ, into the world. We thank you that He is Lord and that when He teaches, that He teaches with authority and that when He speaks, He speaks with authority and that when He acts, He acts in authority, Lord, that you only gave Him and that when He went into the temple, Lord, He cleared it out and He brought it back to its purpose. God, we ask you today, send your Son, Jesus Christ, into our lives through your Holy Spirit and wipe us clean, clear us out. Lord, we come to you as sinners, as people with mistakes and wrongs and bad habits and bad patterns and maybe even bad addictions, Lord, that are not glorifying to you. We ask this, Lord, have mercy. Forgive us. Give us your grace and your mercy and your forgiveness. And we know, Lord, and we are assured through your word that if we confess our sins, you are possible and willing to forgive them. God, we thank you for your grace. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. 
keep on reading uh, download the reading plan leave some comments in, in uh, below here and uh, share the video and have a good week um, see you back see you again tomorrow